What is happening everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KM Already Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Today I am going to teach you how to build this little circuit here that will allow us to use the MXP50 amplifier with the ICOM 705. But before we do, I have to give a ginormous thank you to Kevin Loff and KB9RLW for designing this circuit. 100% credit for this video goes to Kevin. Go check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, building this circuit is a pain in the butt. Uh, this right here in my hand is the, I think the 10th one I built before I finally uh, got the, the design right and, and the, what I think to be the best way to put this thing together. Um, the one thing in Kevin's video that he doesn't really show is how to actually install all this stuff. So I am going to build another one of these for you and I'll walk you through every little step and then we will perform surgery on this amplifier and hopefully at the end of all this, we'll have a working product. <laughs> so let's hop over on the bench and uh, hopefully not make anything smoke too much. So as you can see, I've gone through a few of these and there's even more that are in the trash can. And with every iteration, I kind of have, have screwed up or maybe figured out a better way to do something. And this top one here, I think, is the best way to do it. Basically what was happening is that everything is so small and you're just using this tiny little circuit board. And this was the probably the ninth one that I did and I just wasn't really happy with it. And I was concerned about things shorting out. So this one I believe is designed in such a way that nothing is gonna short out. And once we install this in the amplifier, there's really nothing that's gonna happen with it. So we'll, we'll put some heat shrink on it at the end of this, but let's get into what we need. Now it's a very simple circuit. It's just a pain in the butt to do. So basically we're gonna take some type of through hole circuit board and we just need to cut a three by two little rectangle out of it. We only need a couple of these holes. This is a 2N3906 PNP transistor. We have a 10K resistor and I don't know the value of this diode, but the directions say diode is just any single diode. I wanna give a special shout out to my friend Ryan, KF8IV, for supplying us with all the bits and components to make this happen, as well as instructing me how to put this together. So thanks, Ryan. Okay, now the first thing we wanna do, we wanna make sure that these gold parts on the circuit board are actually facing down. And we wanna start with our transistor. Now I've found that I wanna spread these apart so the two outside legs are on the back row and then the center, I'm gonna bring one row ahead to kinda of have it stand up as a triangle. And we need to do this before the diode. So I'll kinda of bend them to make a little triangle type jobby and force them into their home. Then I'm going to spread these two legs out. Okay. So that's what we have now. And it's important to note the flat side of the transistor is facing towards me for this whole project. Just so you have some orientation. Next, we're going to do this step, which is connecting the resistor and a red wire to the two center pads there, and we're also gonna solder that to the center lead of the transistor. This is the real fun part. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna take just a few inches, we don't need much. This is 24 gauge wire I'm using, and I'm gonna strip off enough so I can twist them together with the resistor. And I'm pretty much just gonna go right down to the resistor there. I don't really want a lot of space. I want to twist all these wires together really well. And then we can cut off any excess that's more than two of these pads wide because that's how we're going to solder it on right there. So see how we're just the width of two pads now? This is the part that is horrible. For me anyway, I need to use two helping hands. And what, what we need to do with this is kind of rest this wire across the two pads of the circuit board and solder them. And this is gonna just hold everything there so it doesn't move around so it can't short. 
but holding all these parts in place is a bit of a challenge. So I'm gonna tack this back one first. Gotta be quick. And then we can solder this back one. Done. So now we've got just a nice solder connection. We can go ahead and snip off the leg of the transistor. Now we need to put on the diode. Now it's important to note the directionality of the diode. Again, notice the flat part is facing towards us on the transistor. You can see a black uh, stripe there. That's gonna be facing to our left towards the power side where it's gonna connect to the 12 volt DC. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fold the wire down. And I'm gonna insert it on the two far holes of the front pad. Okay, turn it over. I can use some needle nose pliers to kind of snug it up. And then I'm gonna grab the wire. And I'm gonna pull it tight. I'm gonna bring it up and under the legs from the transistor. So it's on the pad there. And I'll do the same thing with this guy, up and under. Putting, putting a bit of pressure on it. I want to keep it everything nice and tight and snug. Then we can solder these two pads together. Just like that. And I'm not so much worried about actually soldering it to the pad. The goal is to actually just have the wires soldered together, but the pads being soldered are gonna kinda just help everything stay rigid. Now at this point, I wanna check for continuity, just to make sure we don't have any solder bridges, and we don't, so we're good. Now we can snip off the excess wire from the diode, do not cut the wire of the transistor. So now that's what we should have. So I've got about six inches of red 24 gauge wire and I wanna splice off, oh, a half an inch or so. And I'm just gonna take a couple turns around the diode here, or excuse me, the resistor. I know this isn't the greatest Splice, but there's not going to be any tension on this, so I'm not really worried. I'm more I'm more worried about keeping its linearity than I am about, you know, any actual force on it. So that's good enough. We'll solder that. Very simple. I'll go ahead and trim the excess wire here, and I'll slide on some heat shrink tubing. Give that a whack. Now I'm going to attach a black wire to this transistor lead. And I'll cut off about three inches. Strip it down. Again, I'm not too worried about how I splice this. It's, it's the ginormous pain in the butt. We don't have much wire to go by here. So as far as I'm concerned, so long as it sticks, I'm happy. We're doing the old wrap and splice. Probably the worst way to splice a wire, but that's what we're doing. Done. And do some heat shrink on this guy too. All right, it's time for the operation. So the way this whole thing is gonna go together, one, I'm gonna turn it so it's kinda upside down so all the solder points are facing up. What's gonna happen here, I'm gonna cut some of these wires to, to make them a bit shorter, but the black wire here is gonna connect to this black wire, and per Kevin's instructions, he just shaved off some of the wire and tapped it, so I'm gonna do that. The red wire, however, we need to cut, and we're gonna solder this red wire to this red wire and also the pin from the transistor 
to the red wire so it's facing the front or the you know the business side of the radio here's the knobs and stuff and here uh, this longer red wire so the circuit's just going to kind of sit in here and this longer red wire is going to tap in to this power point right here i'm just going to put some flux on there reflow that solder and that should be the easiest part of all of this so wish me luck hold on to your butts i'm going to pop this out to make my life easier Let's start with the red no turning back here just cut that that hurt <laughs> strip some of this wire i really don't need very much so let's cut off i'm gonna leave i'm gonna cut this i'm gonna leave just about maybe a hair over an inch or so heat shrink for good measure. Whew. All right, so I've got the wire wrapped around each other. aren't racing at all. Next, this is the part that really scares me. I'm going to shave this wire and tap the black into that. And I don't know how to do that. So we're going <laughs> to we're going to learn together. So I can probably fold it over there. Maybe cut the wire here. And I just want to strip a little bit. I'm thinking not much at all. Go ahead and tin that too. Get your favorite razor blade out. And just gently. Shave away some of that insulation. I may have got a wire or two, but such is life. Go in. I got my best solder work, but I think that'll hold. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of electrical, liquid electrical tape, just to try and prevent any shorts. And let that dry for a few minutes, and then we'll proceed. Now I'm going to strip a little bit of this red wire off and I'm thinking I might actually be able to just tap that right to the board here. So I think that's what I'm going to try and do. Now I pre-tinned this wire and I cut a little bit of the lead off the transistor because I can just solder this to the board here. But before we do that, I'm going to put some heat shrink over. And then we'll melt. We'll uh, melt that when we make our connection. You know what? Let's just put some flux on here. Let's see if we can just reflow that solder. Oh yeah! Look at that. That is a beautiful connection. Now, put our heat shrink tubing over. this down here. Put this back in. Look at that. Snug as a bug in a rug. He was right. Now the last thing we have to do is solder this wire right there. So we can just run it along here cut it the same length. So I need to cut a little bit off here. Strip a little. I'm going to pre-tin this wire. 
Now we'll put a drop of flux on that solder and wish me luck. Just make that connection. That looks good. I'm gonna put another little dollop of liquid electrical tape on this wire here, just because that is exposed a little bit. And when I put the cover on, I don't wanna risk any short circuits. Now all that's left is to put the cover back on and plug it into the radio. So now we're ready to connect the radio to the amplifier and I wanna to touch on this real quick. The amplifier comes with a bunch of connectors and TRS connectors and TRRS. And I've never seen a connector like this. I have no idea how I would solder a wire to this. So I'm not using the connectors that came with this amplifier. Instead, we're taking this wire. This is the keying wire that's gonna plug in right here, somehow like that, okay? And I just put a bunch of little heat shrink segments on each portion as well, just to keep the wire. Uh, manageable and then I soldered on my own TRS connector and we're using the tip connected to the red wire and the sleeve connected to the black wire uh, and that's how I wired all this and then I just put some heat shrink on it this is gonna plug into the ALC of the radio and that's what's gonna send the keying signal and hopefully if we did everything right, we should be able to watch this meter. I'm going to key down on CW and we should be getting more than five watts, somewhere to the effect of 50 watts. So let's see what happens. Not going to lie, I'm a little nervous. So I've got the HF power on 30%, which is the internal battery here. So going into a dummy load, turn the amplifier on, let's change that to the 20 meter setting. All right, let's see what happens. Look at that. I'll be darned, it works. <laughs> Get right out of town. <laughs> let's put 50% uh, power in and 42 watts out. That is pretty slick. It freaking works. Let's try, let's go all the way down. Let's see what kind of power we get on 80. So five, so 50%, which is five watts theoretically. So we have about 40, 38 watts on 80 meters. Let's go up to 40 meters. About 38 watts. And let's try 17 meters. 42 watts. 15 meters. 43 watts. 12 meters, 45 watts, and 10 meters, 42, 41 watts. Nice! Well, there we have it, gang. What a fun yet very nerve wracking project. Building the circuit is one thing, but actually uh, putting it all together and, and cutting apart your brand new amplifiers, wires. <laughs> There's, there's no second chances with that, I don't think. That's uh, kind of one and done. You either, you either make it or you don't. I'm amazed that it actually works. Uh, again, huge shout out to Kevin KB9RLW. Uh, thank you so much for figuring all this out so feeble-minded folks like myself can uh, use this amplifier with the 705. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps you kind of show a little bit deeper how to get your amplifier working with the 705. If you have questions, do leave them in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We will see you guys again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.